Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into the best whiskey of 2022. Let's freaking go. But before we do that, please do me that favor. Like, comment, subscribe. Helps us out a ton. Seriously appreciate the support. But let's get into today's video. So, for any of you who are not tracking what we did, there's a previous video, The Worst Whiskeys of 2022, Go back, watch that. I kind of explain what we did here a little bit better or a little bit more in depth than that. But essentially, we had a 20 bottle flight. This is going to be the top 10 of that 20 bottle flight comprised of all the limited releases I got this year. And to kind of round it off and make it a, you know, even nice number of 20 bottles, I added some of the barrel picks from the community that I really, really liked. Today, we're covering the top 10 of that blind flight. And no better bottle to kick it off with than, you guessed it, number 10. And that is a bottle I did not even expect to make it in the top 10, let alone maybe even this list. A little bit of a curveball, but it is Doc Swinson's The Prime Barrel Club MGP Pick. This is fantastic. I wish all MGP was this freaking good. This is MGP unlike most MGP that is sitting on the shelves. Why? Not a freaking clue. It's like five years and some change or whatever. I threw it in randomly to get three bottles on my order so I didn't have to pay for shipping. And it didn't blow my mind when I tried it first, but in the blind, it clapped cheeks. This is one of the best, if not the best, just normal, non-finished barrel of MGP whiskey that's not like ultra age that I've ever had. This is an incredible five-year-old and some change. Single barrel MGP pick that is at 114.2 proof. And it just, man, blew my mind. Blew my mind with how good that MGP is because I've never had MGP that good. And then after that, the bottle I bought with those other, I got two of these bad boys, Trev Wilson's Sagamore Spirits Rye Picker. Well, Trev and the WhiskeyChannel.com. This is going to be their Sug It More Rye Pick. This bottle is freaking awesome. This is a rye whiskey for a bourbon drinker. It's not the most herbaceous or spicy rye, but it is incredibly good. It's almost eight years old. It's seven and like it's like seven and like 11 months. Like it was so close to being able to put an eight on the label, but unfortunately they just couldn't do that. But it's an awesome, awesome Sagamore Spirits rye. And like I said, I love Sagamore Spirits. I've always loved them. I usually go a little bit more on the or herbal, like rye heavy, very rye forward spice. But this one is very easy. It's sweet, it's accessible, and it's, it's a great intro for that bourbon lover into the world of rye and something they might actually enjoy. And then another barrel pick. This like this top 10 is very, very heavy with barrel picks initially, and then it moves far away from barrel picks. Jepson's Bourbon Cognac Pick. Cognac finished MGP. I think this stuff is six and a half years old, finishing cognac, and this is the tits. I... How should I put this? I don't truly love a lot of cognac finished stuff. Why? I don't really know. There's something about this cognac finish that kills it. It plays a really nice, like sweet and savory and spicy, but also still very, very sweet and MGP bourbon-esque. Uh, it's just chef's kiss. Beautiful, beautiful. This is my favorite MGP pick of all time, as of current time of filming. I mean, as far as bourbon wise goes, I, I don't know. There could be a rye that I probably like a little bit better, but this stuff is awesome. It's 120.52 proof, six and a half years old, and it's a fantastic pick. If you haven't tried out a lot of the stuff that Storytime has been picking recently, man, you are missing out because their stuff is gold. After that, a bottle that I've enjoyed the crap out of and a brand that I've really grown to love over this last year, Barrel, Barrel, Barrel Vantage. Barrel as a whole, their company, I started out really hating them because they're 
or not hating, hate, hate's a strong word, but like disliking a little bit just because they're bottles, it's all sourced and it's all pretty expensive because it's all around the $80, $90 range. But each year they release a limited edition version of their product, which is freaking awesome. So this year, I mean, they also released a bunch of like gold and silver labels of their products this year as well. But this is their kind of like new experiment. Last year was the the rye, the seagrass, which I loved. The year before that, I think was dovetail. This year, they did a toasting experiment with Mizanar oak, French oak, and American oak. And I think it came out really, really well. It has some citrusy notes that you don't see in a lot of toasted whiskeys, but it's really, really solid. It's like a florally citrus toasted bourbon, and I loved the crap out of that bottle. After that one, a bottle I was disappointed in. Disappointed in. Just because expectations, expectations, expectations. This bottle is supposed to be here. This one only ended up getting number six on the list. Didn't even scratch the top five. And I love the crap out of this brand. I love the crap out of these bottlings. I buy all of these without hesitation as long as they're under 100 proof. And I honestly drink one of these bottles this year. That's why this is still in some foil wrapping because this is the second. I killed the original bottle doing the flight for this. Elijah Craig A122. This has been my least favorite. Actually, this one or last year's Sea Batch have been my two least favorite Elijah Craig Bear Proof since I've been in love with them. These are all really freaking solid. They're 12 year old Bear Proof Heaven Hill. They're like nutty peanut butter. They're always, always good. But I fell in love with them during the 2020 series or their like. Uh, B520, C920, those were my two first bottles. I got the C920 and then the B520. Those blew my mind. They set the bar here. That's not to say that this wasn't incredible. I mean, number six, and it went up against some hitters. I mean, Barrel Vantage. It beat Barrel Vantage, and I loved that bottle. But then getting on to something a little bit brighter, number five. The first bottle of these kind I've had, and I can't wait to get more, Old Forster Single Barrels. Barrel Proof. These are amazing, legitimately blew my mind. I, I was a little surprised originally, full disclosure, a little surprised because I've heard nothing but negative stuff about Old Forster Barrel Proofs. Just because a lot of people, when they first came out, they were like, these are too hot. These are just not good at all. This is amazing. This is Old Forester in its prime. It's not overly complex. It's, you know, like not the most mind-blowing Old Forester product. But this is what I would like to see out of Old Forester moving forward. I put this up against the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, which is to me like a pinnacle, a staple of just like um brown foreman just jack daniels like that's amazing this clapped its cheeks it's just like that but like more of a darker more chocolatey flavor profile and i loved that it was man just it wasn't even a competition this clapped its cheeks this is an amazing bottle this is the master distiller selected so i think it's like the same concept of the, you know, Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof where it's like, this is like the old Forester single barrel barrel proof, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not an actual pick or whatever. This is warehouse one, floor three, and then it is 131.9 proof, but it doesn't drink like that. It literally drinks just so easy, so crushable, fantastic. This, I wish all old Forester was like this because man, for 80 bucks, that is a steal. Number four on the list, and that is Iron Root Apothesis. Apothesis? Apothesis? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, full disclosure. This is straight bourbon whiskey finished in Pinot de Chart Char Char Charentes casks. I'll put it down here. Like I'm probably butchering how to say it, but you know, I'll put I'll put it on the screen for you. It is their bourbon finished in some sort of cast that I can't pronounce at 120.2 proof. Let's see if there's an 
age. I don't see an age, but this is awesome. For the longest time, I've been a huge Iron Root fan. I'm a huge fan of their bourbon. I love Texas whiskey, and whatever they're doing is fantastic. This is legitimately the best Texas whiskey I've had. Outside of maybe Balcona single malts, but that's just because I'm a huge single malt fan. Um, but like as far as like Texas bourbon goes, there's nothing that compares to Iron Root. They know what they're freaking doing. And this is marrying that like my beautiful love for their Texas bourbon with this love for finishing. This was awesome. I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did. Man, it is just the words don't describe how amazing this bottle is to me. I mean, shit, it beat an old Forrester single barrel barrel proof and an Elijah Craig. Like, what the heck? It wasn't supposed to do that, but it did it, man. It freaking did it. Then after that one, the top three. Number three on my list, the third place. The bronze trophy goes to the Elijah Craig barrel proof that won him back. All my rants when I was talking about the A122, this made up for him. Expectations of Elijah Craig, here. This one, freaking here. It was amazing. This is the first Elijah Craig barrel proof I've had in the last two years that has reconfirmed my thoughts and opinions 100% for Elijah Craig barrel proof. This is amazing. It's dark chocolate, peanut butter, it's luscious, it has a nice oak and like just sweetness to it. There is no better value in bourbon out there than Elijah Craig Bear Proofs and their standards when they're this high are incredible, incredible. This cannot be beat for $70, got this for $70. This, I would easily pay double that. Again, Really freaking glad I don't have to. Really glad I don't have to. But this beautiful bottle, beautiful bottle. And this was the best Elijah Craig Bear Proof I've had in the last two years. The only other bourbon to beat that bottle. Number two, Woodford Reserve Batch Proof 2022. This was amazing. Incredible. I love dark, aggressive flavor profiles. That's my jam. That's what I'm into. That's what I go after. In my experience, Woodford Reserve, usually a little bit on the lighter side, usually a little bit caramely, or more like caramely, lighter. Last year, theirs was kind of like a syrup and waffles with butter, which, man, incredible, incredible. That, this one is like that, but if you added like dark chocolate, bananas, a little bit of oak in there. Like this is last year's, but if you cranked it up to 11 and blasted the base, this is amazing. This is by far my favorite bourbon this year. Like this stomped everything else. And I'm so glad it did because that was my opinion going into this. It's just like, you know, sometimes you do blinds and they don't really turn out the way you thought they would be. But this one, man, this even blind, nothing compares to it. It's amazing. And the wonderful thing about this, it's 118.4 proof. Like it didn't need, in order to get all that flavor you get off of it, it doesn't need to be at 140, 130 proof. Like it doesn't need to be insanely hot. That is a sub 120 proof, barrel proof bourbon that stops it freaking stops then the last one on this list a bottle i literally got like a week ago westland single cask whiskey so this is an american single malt that was finished in a px sherry hogshead this is a seven-year-old 110 proof american single malt and this has been the best american single malt i've had in my entire life this is cask number 2635. This isn't a single barrel pick from my local store where I picked it up at because it didn't have any of their like branding or labeling on it. I got it for like 110 and it was worth every single penny. 
I don't know if this is them just like kind of like, you know, how old Forster has that master barrel selected. Jack Daniels just has their normal like single barrel picks. I don't know if these are just their normal single barrels, but man, this stuff at 110, because I have the non peated um, stuff at like 90 proof or whatever. This stuff at 110, then finished in PX Sherry. Man, this is like boozy, syrupy raisins, and it is incredible a little bit of chocolate in there blew my mind blew my mind for a lot of you out there this probably isn't going to be your favorite whiskey from 2022 most of you guys are probably going to side with my second one it's just i have my likes i'm a huge fan of american single malt so that's why this one won for me because this one stood out that sherry influence on that is insane but it is so complex. It's a very complex whiskey and it's amazing. I didn't expect myself to love it that much. Best American single malt I've had today. If you have any other single malts that you would suggest, you know, that might be able to beat this, let me know down below. I'd be interested because that man, other, every other single malt, that one, just so much better, so much better. That being said, this is a wrap for today's video. That was my list of the top 10 bourbons, whiskeys from 2022. I loved every single one of these, whether I knew it before this or I've just now recently figured out these are all really, really incredible bottles. Leave a comment down below what you guys thought about my list as well as what was your favorite whiskey of 2022 and you know which one were you the most surprised about? Also, you know, do us a favor, you know, like, subscribe, check out the Facebook, Instagram, the Patreon, the links for all that stuff are down there below. Any support goes a long way and we seriously appreciate the help. That is a wrap for today's video though. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later in 2023. Let's freaking go.